10.13 was a big, big miss. And the next patch is here to save us, our little dwarf planet coming into our galaxy's orbit. Don't know what we're talking about? Oh, come on, appreciate a little astronomy joke. Puns aside though, this patch is a much needed heavy touch opposite to the light touches we saw previously. Hey guys, and welcome to another Pro Guides Team Fight Tactics video. Today, we're going to be looking into patch 10.14, going through the interesting changes Riot made, and making some predictions on how our experts think the meta is going to shake out. Patch 10.14 is here to breathe some fresh air into a meta that is becoming quite stale. There are also a couple of important system changes that we need to talk about, which affect our gameplay quite a bit. In short, what we're going to be talking about in this video is changes and balances to traits, champion changes, the new galaxy being introduced, item changes, system changes, predictions. Make sure to stay tuned until the to see what's gonna be awesome in 10.14 meta. Keep in mind that predictions made in this video are exactly that predictions. They're subject to change, and we will definitely keep you updated in our mid-patch update. Feel free to share any comments below giving us your feedback, especially if you have something new to add or you disagree with what we predicted. We will be happy to read them. If anything is pulled from the original PBE changes or added in, you can find the info in the comments as well about what ended up not making it to the live servers. Before we dive in, I just want to let you guys know that we have a Discord community and a new subreddit that is growing really fast. We have you to thank for that, and we want to continue building our community and helping you be a part of it, so make sure you check that link in the description below. Trait changes. A few things changed, but again, like in 10.13, Riot did not nerf or buff anything by a great margin, focusing on champions instead, as we will see later in the video. Let's focus on traits for now, and the changes are... Celestial is getting easier to be splashed into comps, like in set 3, bringing you more heal for your buck. Also, 6 Celestial seems to be ridiculous, healing you for an amazing amount. Cybernetics are getting another relatively small nerf, but those nerfs are starting to tell. Especially the early 3 cyber start will suffer a bit more, especially since the units themselves aren't really anything to write home about with all the extra stats. Sorcerers are hit as well, with a very small nerf to their silver and gold tree. It should not have that huge of an impact, but combined with some other changes we will see later, there will be an impact. Star Guardians have been reworked completely. I mean, the Argent does the same thing, but it is drastically reduced at all levels by an order of magnitude. Instead, the power went into all the champions themselves, as we will see in the champion section. And that's it for the trait balance changes. We'll discuss more about their possible meta implications at the end of the video. Champion buffs slash nerfs. Moving on to the champion changes. There are quite a few of those, mostly to champions who have not seen the spotlight in a while. You might see some forgotten faces show up again. One costs. Jarvin got a buff. Our favorite Flaglands bad minister rap song bearer gets some oomph back into his kit, getting tankier, casting faster, and giving more attack speed. Zaya is also getting another small buff after last patch, with her base attack speed seeing an increase, which is a change across star levels. A familiar comp is rising. Poppy will require a bit less maximum mana to cast, but her initial cast will be at the same speed as before. That means her second ultimate onwards, she will cast faster. Same goes for Zoe, who will be slower in her first cast, but massively faster in her second onwards, resulting in her casting even more in those clutch late game fights. Two costs. Finally, for us heavy metal fans, Mord is getting some love. The Pentakill Legend will become a bit tankier and a significant amount more damaging while in his ultimate. Rakan is underperforming apparently and is getting a decent boost to his base HP. Yasuo will now cast faster, as he still hasn't reached the level where he feels good to play. Three costs. There's a lot of three cost changes, so let's start with the biggest one. Ash is getting more HP, more attack speed, more spell power, and a longer stun. Seeing as her ult can actually whiff, the devs feel like she should feel like a decent unit in compensation. Karma is also getting some more love, aiming to truly be that fourth item on your carry. Her shield and attack speed keep getting bigger and bigger, beckoning another olden comp back to life. Ezreal has been so strong since his rework in set 3.5, so he's finally being brought down a bit, casting a bit slower and doing less damage with auto attacks. Nico becomes tankier. There's not much else to say. Oh, she also casts much slower in compensation though, especially since in the new galaxy, that ultimate could be a nightmare 
there early. Shaco casts a bit faster as well, hopefully you'll start seeing some play again. I miss the old deceiver clown. Vayne is finally getting toned down as she was hogging Aurelia's spotlight. She's both squishier and does less base damage now, and since her ult scales with AD, she is weaker during her ult as well. Syndra gets supercharged, both casting much faster with less mana, as well as doing a bit more damage in 2 and 3 star. Finally, Vi has been one-shotting too many carries lately. Yes, Riot keeps track and feels your pain, and will be doing less damage with her ultimate across the board. Forecast. Lots of changes in forecasts as well, but let's start with a small one. Fizz is reined in a little bit as he was one-shotting too many backlines with his AoE. On to the good stuff, with massive buffs to Aurelia, bringing her to the fore again as the cybernetics carry alongside Echo. She especially gets buffed where she needs to, like her tanky stats. Jin is getting a huge buff on his fourth shot, as well as other small DPS boosts along the way. Jinx is getting a small nerf, as a few champions that enabled her, like Ezreal and a certain starship, are getting nerfed. She only gets a small attack speed nerf, but we think she might get a couple more next patch patch or hotfix. Riven gets toned down a bit more, which we think is a bit of a miss as she is not that dominant and we feel the sorcerer nerf was enough to reduce her survivability. Victor though did need a nerf, and he gets a decently sized one in the second really hurtful part of his laser beam. Soraka, as part of the star guardian change, will cast slightly faster. Five costs, some big changes here, but let's start with the easier one. Janna gets a small nerf to compensate for faster casting due to Star Guardian changes, but only to the attack speed provided, not the stun duration. Aurelian Soul finally gets nerfed, maybe not enough in our opinion, but we will see. Getting a 1 star A Soul will definitely be less impactful at least, as he will drain less mana. Urgot sees an Excel spreadsheet of changes. I'm worried our editor will run out of space for all these bullet points, but here we go. He essentially is much more position reliant now, but still a decent option, just less of an auto include and definitely a much worse thresh combo. He will be tankier, cast a bit more, but will reel his catch in slower and can be body blocked now. Also, GA finally stops him. Don't underestimate him, but he is definitely a different chain monster now. That's it with champion changes. Wow, that was a lot. The meta is going to shift precariously next patch, hopefully to keep things interesting. Stay tuned for the predictions as we have some juicy ones today. New Galaxy. We really do not like the New Galaxy. It's called Dwarf Planet. Hey, remember our joke at the start? And it essentially is a set one board with one less row for each player. What does that mean though? Units like Nar, Nico, Teemo, Mech are much stronger in this one. Units like Aurelian Soul and Jinx are much more vulnerable. Riven with Quicksilver will be reduced ridiculous in this map. We are not that excited about this, having played it in PBE, but we will see how it all unfolds. It certainly makes for a mindset shift in how to position units. Champions that fly across the map a lot, looking at you Aurelia, should also be quite strong here. Item changes. We only have two item changes this patch, with one of them being a tooltip correction. Giant Slayer now changed to damage boost instead of true damage to make it less confusing, but the item itself hasn't changed. Ionic Spark gets a well-deserved nerf, as it is currently and probably still is the most slammable item in the game. This nerf should not deter you from slamming Ionic Spark, in our opinion. That's all, let's move into some awesome system changes that hit this patch. Important system changes. Final position in standings will not be determined by your map or how fast you run or die at the end of the round if multiple people die at the same time. Instead, a much more fair system is introduced where you get judged by the severity of your loss. If you were too weak and lost by a landslide, getting to, let's say, negative 20 HP, the person who lost alongside you but was much stronger and lost because of fight RNG gets to negative 5 HP. Even if you lose after them, they will rank above you because they did not lose as badly. This change encourages positioning to eke out every advantage at the late game, as well as playing in an even more aggressive way throughout the game to salvage as much HP as possible. Another nice, a bit more niche change was made to getting Nico's help from blue or gold loot boxes early on. Sometimes you only got a Nico from them. Now you will get some gold alongside it as well, so that you don't fall too far behind other players with only a Nico to show for it. Predictions. General gameplay predictions. Not too many things change here, but there will be a shift toward more HP preserving strategies and units. Play champions like Ziggs and Caitlyn in the early game, who almost always guarantee a kill to preserve your HP. Also, position in a way that your carries will not get stuck on front lines for too long, as that could mean a worse loss, hence a lower placement if you die at the same time as others. Champion predictions. Let's take it from the top. From 1 star units, Zaya will be a much stronger early game AD or attack speed item user now, as she will scale better into them. For 2 stars, Mord will also be stronger, especially in early game boards with 2 vanguards and 2 sorcerers. 
For three stars, Ash will see a lot more gameplay, especially since her buddy Jin will be hitting the arena a lot more, so Celestial might come back as a desirable splash of sniper comms. Syndra is perhaps the biggest change for three costs, as she can definitely carry a couple items now and definitely likes blue buff even more than Victor. The nerfed champions did not get hit that hard, all of them still being viable, with the possibility of Urgot being a bit worse for wear now. Finally, Aurelia might be cybernetic saving grace if they are to survive this patch, so try her out. Comp predictions. All previous patch comps are still viable if nerfed in power. Jinx Blaster should still be the strongest among them though, as outside of Ezreal and Aesol, the comp retained most of its power. Enemies casting faster now might make the Jinx more vulnerable to things like AoE or Sorcerer targeted abilities though, so we might start seeing defensive item Jinx again. Star Guardians! The E-Girls are quite possibly back, though to what capacity it remains to be seen. The gold trade is not that worth it, but if you get the right items on Syndra, and with Janna now making those BF swords not seem too bad, as well as Giant Slayer working with sorcerers now, means our magic girls could make a comeback. Fingers crossed. Dark Stars got a lot of their units buffed, but they still should need their two-star Zerith to shine. Instead, we should see more Astro Snipers or the more traditional Vanguard Snipers, at least at the start of the patch. Finally, Unlimited Blade Works might make a comeback. Zaya has steadily gotten buffed again, and with more itemization options like Giant Slayer, she might be a force to be reckoned with alongside her trusty Jarvan. Thanks so much everyone for tuning in, let us know which comps you think will dominate in 10.14, and if you want to get better at TFT, visit ProGuys.com where you can find challenger coaches who will help you reach your dream rank. Thanks again for watching everyone, and we'll see you guys in the next video.